Protection against threats from Russia. First NATO base opened in Albania. Albania has opened the first NATO base. The airbase, located 80 kilometers south of the capital Tirana, is designed to protect the Western Balkans region from the threats posed by Russia, informs NATO. This is another element of security from our region of the Western Balkans, which we know well may be endangered from the neo-imperialist threats and ambitions of the Russian Federation, stated the Prime Minister of Albania, Edi Rama. He also announced that initially the airbase would house two Black Hawk helicopters and three Bayraktar strike drones. The opening ceremony was attended by the President of Albania, Bajram Begaj, Prime Minister Edi Rama, as well as military leadership from Albania and NATO. It is reported that around 50 million euros have been allocated for the modernization of the Soviet-era base. The reconstruction of the facility began in 2019, during which time the runways, control tower, hangars and warehouses were renovated. According to NATO, acting spokesperson Dylan White, the airbase will serve as a crucial NATO hub, strengthening the alliance's presence in the Western Balkans. In the first half of 2024, NATO is conducting a series of exercises under the overall codename Steadfast Defender 24. Poland is one of the participating countries and will host a significant number of soldiers and equipment from allies on its territory. As part of Steadfast Defender 24, Poland will also conduct national exercises called Dragon 24, involving the armed forces of other countries. Additionally, on March the 4th, large-scale military exercises called Nordic Response 24 began in northern Finland, Sweden and Norway. These exercises, led by Norway, will continue until March the 15th. Approximately 20,000 military personnel from 14 countries, along with over 50 ships, including frigates and submarines, and more than 100 aircraft, including destroyers, helicopters and other aircraft, will participate. Furthermore, in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Sicily, maritime exercises named Dynamic Manta began on the morning of February the 26th. These NATO exercises serve as a platform to test and enhance the Alliance's crisis response capabilities. Russia prepares for China's invasion. Military rehearses use of nuclear weapons. The Russian armed forces have reportedly rehearsed the early stage use of tactical nuclear weapons in a conflict scenario with a major global power, according to leaked information from Russian military files outlining preparations for potential Chinese aggression. A threshold for the implementation of tactical nuclear weapons appears lower than ever publicly acknowledged by Russia. The cache comprises 29 classified Russian military files spanning from 2008 to 2014. Criteria for potential nuclear responses range from an adversary's invasion of Russian territory to more specific triggers such as the destruction of 20% of Russian strategic submarines armed with ballistic missiles. Despite the documents dating back a decade or more, experts assert their relevance to contemporary Russian military doctrine. Training materials depict scenarios wherein the Russian Eastern Military District simulated various incursions by China. Such exercises offer rare insights into Russia's view of its nuclear arsenal as a cornerstone of defense policy and its readiness to deliver a first nuclear strike under certain combat conditions. One exercise outlining a hypothetical attack by China notes that Russia dubbed the Northern Federation for the purpose of the war game, could respond with a tactical nuclear strike in order to stop the South from advancing with a second wave of invading forces. The order has been given by the Commander-in-Chief to use nuclear weapons in the event the enemy deploys second echelon units and the South threatens to attack further in the direction of the main strike, the document says. In a separate training presentation for naval officers unrelated to China, broader criteria for a potential nuclear strike are outlined, including repelling an adversary's landing on Russian territory, targeting units responsible for guarding border areas, or countering an imminent enemy attack with conventional arms. The threshold is defined as a combination of factors where losses incurred by Russian forces would irrevocably lead to their failure to stop major enemy aggression, a scenario deemed critical situation for the state of security of Russia.
Russia is recruiting residents of Sierra Leone, Cuba and Nepal for war in Ukraine. The Russian Federation continues to recruit foreigners for the war in Ukraine because it is cheaper and more advantageous than mobilizing Russians. This includes Nepalese and Cubans, according to a statement from Andriy Yusov, a representative of the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine. According to him, there is information that the Russian Federation is recruiting residents of Sierra Leone, Cuba and Nepal. These are countries where citizens have low incomes, so Russia offers men there easy and quick earnings without explaining where they will be spent. It is important that most governments of the countries where the work of Russian recruiters networks is recorded publicly condemn such activities, even diplomatically issue statements. But in countries with low incomes, the 1.5 to 2,000 that the aggressor offers, along with the promise that it will not involve participation in combat operations but some kind of security, may seem attractive to some people, Yusov says. As reported earlier, Russian troops were experiencing a shortage of military personnel to fill combat losses, so they were trying to enlist foreign volunteers for service. In particular, the terrorist state has been recruiting citizens of Cuba for the war in Ukraine. The latter were promised high wages, bonuses and vacations. Also at the beginning of January, Nepal stopped issuing permits to its citizens to work in Russia and Ukraine. At least 10 Nepalese soldiers were killed while serving in the Russian army.